Good day, fellows. Lesson eight of Big Data Applications and Analytics, Jeffrey Fox Instructor. And this is discussing data science and the pipeline which runs from data to information to knowledge to wisdom to decisions. That's this pipeline here. Uh, and I sometimes denote this whole thing as DIKW, Data Information Knowledge Wisdom. Because wisdom is not so clearly defined, but it's sort of intuitively obvious. Uh, wisdom is sort of a community property, whereas knowledge might be the knowledge of an individual. So wisdom is sort of a more sophisticated knowledge. And uh, we also will have a little discussion of how the sort of commercial effectively approaches to data science, the platforms that enable data science and activity. So let's get going, thank you very much. And that's um, stated precisely here. And I would say under decisions, we have things like community acceptance of results, like um, uh, the Higgs particle exists, that's an example of a Physics, community wisdom, and another possibility is that you know the government will run some data through this um, process and make a decision. We will offer some new healthcare service or something like that. Typically, as you go down this pipeline, the amount of data in measured in bits and bytes uh, de decreases, it goes down in size, where if you like, the value goes up. So. Uh, um, and that's a very important, that's actually why it's not so easy sometimes to say how much data there is, because people can quote the data at this level or this level. And sometimes the data at this level is actually thrown away immediately, because it's produced in some sensor and you immediately process it, and then you get less. I mean, uh, if you were a satellite um, circulating, circu uh, running around Mars or something, where there's a huge cost of uh, data transfer, you would do as much processing possible before you sent the data. So you'd put it as far forward in this pipeline as you could. Here's a picture which I've used an awful lot, which shows this um, information, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, decision process in a sort of more, Broad fashion around the edges here, we have all the sources of data, or actually of information, or knowledge, um, including raw sources like uh, these are seismographs. This is probably a bioinformatics machine. Here's some water measurements. And um, here we have some telescope, or smartphone, or so on. We have just services running on computers. Uh, we have uh, satellites. We have just another cloud, another whole thing. Here we have the LHC detector. We have a database. We have a dupe cluster. We have a grid. We just have some storage. We have a webcam. We have a telescope. And these are just run through filters. The filters are what promote you through this pipeline. Uh, you, you do not go from information to data in a filter, you go from data to information, information to knowledge. So here we trundle through our various things, data, information, knowledge, wisdom, and then we go to the portal where the president or you or whoever's looking, the doctor makes the decision. This is how we're gonna treat your illness or what, whatever the decision is. So this is a in generally um, important picture and you can say that most of these things are filter clouds running analytics. I also put so-called discovery clouds, because you're gonna do queries on this data, and uh, that's gonna be part of your decision making. And all of these things in principle run on clouds. They're all built as services, and that's uh, the, the way we're meant to do things this world. And here is our final uh, slide in this set of this very general discussion of the pipeline. And we just take Google Maps and navigation as the example of the field. So the data is the original maps, USGS, satellites for the overlays and the street camps. The information is the integration of that data are we have to clean up on a basic Google Maps web page. Knowledge is when Google Maps displays a particular way to get from 
place A to place B, sometimes with multiple choices. And then finally, the decision of the wisdom comes when you actually decide what route to drive, and you drive that route, hopefully getting to where you want to go. So this is just a simple example of the DIKW uh, pipeline, which is pretty universal. Although I stress that the actual dividing line between data and information, between information and knowledge, and knowledge and wisdom, and wisdom and decisions, is extremely artificial and wishy-washy. So you shouldn't uh, read too much into into that. All right. Well, we've shown there were lots of hype curves, and there was a hype curve for data science or for advanced analytics and data science. Which is just the technology that enables the practice of data science, and um, you know, well, there are all sorts of things here. Optimization, as again, Spark. We know that's a very popular uh, cloud computing platform. Um, graph analysis, natural language questioning answering. It's pointing out where big data was the year. This was 2015. Big data is here. As I think I mentioned, things like big data and clouds are so important, they've just disappeared off these hype curves. They're no longer hype. They're part of the world. And here we have, there's a lot of important things which underlie the revolution in maps and uh, ride hailing and things like that, which are geospatial intelligence. Event stream processing, almost all data comes in events created by um, accelerators. Or uh, people tweeting, or Internet of Things devices doing their thing and telling you the bug is invading your home or whatever it's doing. And here we have languages like R. Ah. We have various analytics on video and text, um, speech analytics, predictive analytics, machine learning. These are all actually it's interesting. We'll see next year how. A dupe-based data discovery collapses because of Spark. It's sort of interesting. It, it was because the it's, people would not probably agree with that. The dupe is superseded by Spark. The dupe is still actually good at what it does. So that's uh, 2015. Now let's see what happens the following year. 2016. We have a dupe disappearing in a clunk, bonk. Pretty sad. Many few, many few things were absent before the plateaus. Some just disappeared because they're boring. Um, grid computing, I think, was something like that. Others disappeared because they're so important they just absorbed in the ecosystem, like cloud computing and big data. Here, Spark popped over the top. Deep neural nets. We know those are very important. Event stream processing, machine, and these are all things we worked on. And. <coughs> And we actually, here's R, it's now become so so well established, it doesn't require much uh, notice. Python, we would always tend to use Python as a better language than R. And quite by optimization, which is a really venerable, everything in life is optimization. Because all this, like a deep learning network and optimization minimizes some giant uh, um, mathematical function. Uh, graph analytics, we know that's pretty important. Cognitive computing, that's Watson from IBM. So here we have just lots of nice, nifty little things. Reinforcement learning, um, some sort of interactive guided analytics, and so on. Um, so these are just, um, they're even just important because they tell you the types of things that at least Gartner considers important for data science. Now let's see uh, the magic quadrant, which um, has IBM at the top. Maybe that's because of Watson. I don't think everybody would agree that Microsoft is a zero machine learning. Um, MathWorks, because uh, the MathWorks has a uh, MATLAB has uh, capabilities in this area. Where say R with its um, huge library of routines, especially in biology, is and where Python. Where there's important libraries are, I don't know. So I would say this is a slightly um, biased system. This is for data science platforms. These are the environments you use to do data science. Because we don't actually use any of these. Um, 
because we effectively construct our platforms using workflow and other technologies. One that would appear, actually should have appeared here is TensorFlow. That's a very popular um, uh, data science platform these days. So it's cohesive software. Maybe the work we do is incohesive. <coughs> and it has lots of building blocks which we're putting together to do data science solutions. So here we are. We're going to chase IBM. I'm sure we can do better than them. Because Watson doesn't tell you what it does, so that's a serious problem. You can't really do science or make discoveries if you don't know what you're, how you're doing. So here's how they draw some data access. How do you get data into the system? Data preparation. We know that cleaning up data and is very important. In fact, people often say that takes a good fraction of the time. We want to explore the data in a non-controversial fashion, visualize it. We need to automate lots of things. So we need to press a button and say, discover truth. Become wise, make a decision. User interface, well, that's probably rules that everything we do. Um, that's some nice uh, look and feel. Machine learning, well, that is in some sense the core analytics. Things are, it's not quite clear what isn't machine learning. The simpler types of all statistical analyses, I believe, are not called machine learning. Machine learning is reserved for, reserved for sophisticated things like clustering, support vector machine, and things like that. And of course, deep learning and dimensional reduction, et cetera, et cetera. And a few more things. Uh, other advanced analytics. Well, here's what we come the uh, uh, statistics. Optimization, I say, it's sort of interesting. Simulation is a, is a gain. It's a, so that's how you build your model. If you describe your data with a model, you need to do a simulation. Text analytics, image analytics, those are of course machine learning. Uh, flexibility, do you buy a uniform, universal package like Watson, which does everything in a way you don't understand, or do you have a cleaner thing where you can build it up? Of course, deep learning immediately. I, I made a little fun of Watson, but other systems have this problem. Just deep learning networks at the point you're not quite certain why they did what they do. Scalability and performance. Uh, if you multiply your um, number of nodes by 10, your problem by 10, does the execution time remain constant? Here we want to look at the use of the predictive model markup language. This is it's a a language for specifying models, and then we have we have to have, of course the software and package apps. And here, this is sort of um, software-defined data science, which is sort of related to uh, um, what we do with a project called Cloud Mesh, which is software-defined systems. And here we need to manage everything. Everything always needs to be managed, uh, but um, we have to have security, resource management, scheduling. Um, metadata for governance and reuse and version management and so on. You have to have GitHub sitting there to manage the versions of everything you do. All right, so that's um, data science platform. And here's the last set of data science platform capabilities. We need to be able to have a lot of models and, um, and understand and effect. And of course, the role of models is sort of interesting. Though in some sense, data science tries to do as much as it can without models. And deep learning network, it implicitly has a model because the network itself is a model. Uh, what you feed into the network is a model because you can always transfer the data. Transform the data. Do you take? Uh, let's take an image. Do you put, feed in the moments of the image, the Fourier transform, or do you fill, feed in the pixels? There's, in some sense, mathematical equivalent, but one might give you a better answer than the other. Um, does it have a solution such as, how do I see if I'm ill or not? Can I detect fraud automatically? Recommender systems, etc., etc. Anomaly dimension. These are just specific machine learning, like outlier detection. Collaboration. Uh, is this system allow multi-user use and integration of their ideas? Coherence, is it, is it a truly a system or just a bag of, um, a toolkit bag? Which of course the latter might be the best. Um, 
because especially today when things are changing so fast, it's not so obvious you want a coherent system. But still, if you can provide the same capability coherently as the other person does incoherently, then they certainly like me, then probably should do it uh, um, coherently. All right, so that's the end of data science, where we had this initial uh, broad discussion of DIKW, which is the, really a fundamental idea. I remember teaching that was my first class when I came to uh, Indiana University in 2001. I taught DIKW, and I still think it's a pretty reasonable thing to teach. So here we are. This is the end of uh, this lesson on data science. Thank you very much.